With the ever-increasing amount of intermodal traffic on the railroads, freight car builders sought to capitalize and provide modern freight cars to the railroads. One of these was Pullman Standard, which introduced the 5-unit, 40-foot well car set, also known as the Backpacker Well Car Set. The car is easily recognizable by tapered side panels and low profile. Pullman Standard would eventually be absorbed by Trinity Rail Group, but the Backpacker Well Car Set would remain largely unchanged throughout the 1980s, selling several sets to Trailer Train and other Class 1 railroads like Burlington Northern. Scale Trains first introduced the Backpacker in 2020, and after a successful initial release, a second run was announced with more modern paint schemes and intricate paint jobs. This release features more DTTX road numbers as well as XBN well cars patched out for BNSF. The majority of the paint schemes are different with unit-specific patch outs and features a total of 8 road numbers. The MSRP is $180.99, but the standard Scale Trains discount brings the total to $145. The model that we will be taking a look at today is DTTX 64041. This model features patchwork with the Pennsylvania TTX Heritage logo or the large red TTX. This model is the only number in the run that features this logo and really gives a modern look. The model comes with some user applied details, a brake chain tensioner set that is supposed to be applied at the connecting points between the wells B and C. This detail component is not recommended to be installed by scale trains if the user is running a radius below 26 inches. On my TTX model, the side supports were installed such that the rod and wheel only had to be installed, but on the BNSF well car set, the side supports were missing and had to be installed with the extras provided. The well cars are connected via a simple pin and hole system and are easily attached to one another via the pin system. The inner three well cars are interchangeable, but the prototypical arrangement of the well cars are B, C, D, E, and the A well car on the other end. The well car letter arrangements are displayed on the car body side. Like any other scale trains product, the model is littered with details across every aspect. Starting off with the A end of the car, the most notable feature is the etched metal walkway sets in the shiny bare metal. The air system details are intricately done as well. The triple valve is set in the middle of the U-shaped walkways with several piping details running to various other components. The other major air components that can be seen are the retainer valve piping that runs to either side of the well car and the auxiliary air receiver. The air receiver features good rivet details as well as printing on the side of the tank. The two sets of uprights are on the corners of the model. Despite being molded in plastic, the uprights are very well done with the fine Celcon grab irons. On the car body end pieces is the separately applied plastic coupler cut bar attaching to the underside of the draft gear box. The A end of the car is finished off with the train line air hoses. The flexible plastic component is modeled in three colors, the yellow to match the car body paint, black for the hose portion, and silver for the glad hand connection points. The B end of the model is very similar to the A end with the majority of the details being the same. Obviously, the main telling point of the B end is the identification of the brake wheel and the brake wheel assembly attached to the car body top. Both the A and the B end feature more standard details as well, separately applied metal grab irons on the sides and car ends painted to match the main car body color. On the sides of the car body sills, there is brake chain linkage details. This detail is finely done plastic components. Closer to the end is the stirrup steps. These are metal details attached to the underside of the car body. Finally, the last little detail is the die cast metal coupler. This Scale Trains brand coupler is a Type E lower shelf coupler for a very prototypical look. The bodies are made from die cast metal and provide good weight to the models despite the lack of available space. The floors of the well cars are made from plastic. There are several holes on the corners of the well car that allow the container pins to fit inside. The pinholes allow one 40-foot container or two 20-foot containers to easily be installed in the well car. The interior of the well car is also nicely done despite the die cast molding. Some of the features to recognize is the rivet details and interior supports. The connecting points between the well cars have some great detail as well. While it's fairly obvious, this is a good chance to check out the pin and hole system that connects the well cars together. On either side of the interconnecting ends of the well car also have a slightly different version of the etched metal walkways compared to the A and B ends of the car. These feature either an L-shaped or U-shaped based on the version of the intermediate car. In the middle of the etched metal walkway is the interbox connector box that holds the ICBs. Scale trains included several of these small components for running when no containers in the ICBs would be stored away. 
On either side of the connecting pins or holes is the bearing side supports. These separately applied plastic details are painted to match the car body with two different versions to allow the installation of the brake tensioning wheel mentioned earlier. The last detail to note is the train line air hoses that allow air to pass between the individual well cars. These details are similar to the end hoses with the black painting and silver accent painting as well. All the well car meeting points have hoses except for the A and E end which use more of these standard piping between the wells. While the three intermediate well cars all look similar, there are several smaller differences between the three. The main spotting difference for the center well or D is the addition of the extra air receiver and control valve, while the C and E well cars only have a proportional valve. The ends of the cars also have slightly different air plumbing details for each car. While these differences aren't huge, they are very close attention to detail on scale trains part. The trucks are also very nicely detailed and what we've come to expect from scale trains. The outer wheel sets under the A and B end platforms feature 33-inch wheels in the Barber S2 70-ton trucks. Wheels under well car joints feature slightly larger 36-inch wheels in the Barber S2 100-ton trucks. The trucks feature rotating roller bearing caps and extra roller bearing caps are supplied in the parts baggie. The trucks also feature the road name and road number printed on the side truck frame and the well car letter designation is printed as well. All the individual well cars were weighed and all came in with slightly varying weights. The B well car with its extra trucks obviously weighed the most and the total weight was 11.64 ounces or 330 grams. The NMRA recommended weight is 19.25 ounces or 546 grams, so a pretty significant difference in weights, but these cars track pretty well and have good heft. When two 40-foot containers are placed into the wells, this adds 27 grams per container and adds up to 21.2 ounces or 600 grams, just above the NMRA recommended weight. The couplers were also measured against the KD height gauge and both couplers were observed at the correct height. The wheels were also inspected and all found to be engaged. All the major brands of containers were test fitted into the wells and while the containers did fit, it was very snug getting the containers to fully seat into the well car. The backpacker units can carry two 20-foot containers or one 40-foot containers on the bottoms and the tops can support a full arrangement of 40s, 45s, or 48-foot containers. Modern 53-foot containers can fit on the top, but must be staggered with 40-foot containers on the C and E well cars. Moving on to the scoring section, the different scoring categories are shown with their respective point values. The model will be scored off these categories and then given a final score and a subsequent letter grade. The packaging is in line with other Scale Trains products coming in with an updated box, extra details, and extensive paperwork. The paint on the model is extremely well done with the extensive paint patch job. Scale Trains did a great job with no blurriness or fuzziness lettering and sharp paint lines. The models didn't have very many prototype photos and the photos that did exist only showed one well car. Regardless from the available photos, it appears the well cars are accurate to the photos. Scale Trains did a great job cramming all the little details into these cars and making older, more bulky details, refining them for a fine appearance. I think two of the most standout features is all the associated air plumbing as well as the etched metal walkways. The only thing that I could find a fault is the BNSF and TTX units arrived with broken or improperly glued pieces and this shouldn't really happen on a $200 model. The couplers, trucks, and wheels were all professionally done on par with other scale trains models that have metal wheels with rotating roller bearing caps and metal couplers. The models did feature differing truck types depending on the truck location. The well car sets ran fine with no body wobble. They are slightly underweight per the NMRA recommended weight, but still good compared to the other brands. Adding two standard 40-foot containers brings the weight past NMRA recommended, but still would have been nice for a little extra heft in the well cars themselves. The MSRP on these cars gives a little sticker shock, but I think the value of these are very fair. There is a slight MSRP increase from the last run, but overall these cars are very nice at a very fair price. These cars seem to be the best all-around well cars on the market today. There's a few that are heavier but have less details, and there's other manufacturers with arguably better details but track poorly. I think Scale Trains did a great job of providing a very nice model that performs at that same level. Adding up all the points gives us a 98 out of 100 or the rarely achieved A-plus rating. 
Comparing this model to other model actually ties this for first place along with another scale trains model. These wall cars 100% deserve the high score and are the best wall cars on the market today and for the foreseeable future. Scale Trains has really hit a grand slam by releasing these with extensive patch paintworks as well as the BNSF units and these should be on the top of everybody's want list as soon as they're available. I only wish I saw these more on the prototype so I could buy more but these are rather uncommon near me. I would recommend viewers to buy these quickly as they are probably going to sell out rather soon but overall these are incredible models at a very fair price. That's all I got for you guys this time. Hopefully this review will help you decide on picking these up as they are incredible and I cannot recommend them enough. Tell me in the comments if you agree or if you prefer the BNSF one or the red TTX logo well car sets. But that's all I got for you guys this time. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.